if you're dealing with allergies and eczema, you're taking antihistamines and your child has autism, maybe you have ADHD in the family and OCD, think again because there's something you need to know about this and the link between the two and something you can do to make things better. So watch all the way till the end where I'll give you a bit of a, a solution for, for my family anyway that might work for you. Something you've got to know about methylation and histamine and allergies and eczema. So hit the subscribe button and give this, this video a like and share it with somebody who's got autism or allergies in their families, even seasonal allergies. And watch until the end for a, a bit of a crazy, unusual tip on how to deal with this. Is there a link between seasonal allergies, sneezing, coughing, eczema and autism? And is this also a biomarker? for methylation. That's what we're going to dive into today. You're also going to understand why if you are dealing with perfectionism, OCD tendencies, like compulsive tendencies or, or rigid eating issues in your family and seasonal allergies, why it is really important to understand the role of methylation in the mental health and the physical health and well-being in your family and how to regulate that. So in the autism community, one of the things that's really important to understand is the role of histamine and methylation. If you have a child that's got autism or ADHD or OCD, rigidity, or if you, you yourself are very competitive, almost compulsive in your dieting, you're a super, super focused vegetarian or you're overperforming in your, in your sports or in your career, and if you have a child with autism, these things are actually linked. So when you look at whole blood histamine, this is a biomarker for methylation. And methylation is something that's really important to know because methylation defines the DNA expression, expression of DNA, DNA that's supposed to be expressed and DNA that's not supposed to be expressed. And that's really important for our health and mental well-being in general. So it's important to know when we talk about cancer, it's important to know about methylation and regulate and balance methylation when we talk about mental health and particularly in autism and autism families. Many of moms with autistic children deal with depression, deal with perfectionism, deal with rigidity and um, overperformance. So when we have a child with autism, or when you have high histamine, so this is why we talk about this in connection with seasonal allergies, that is a sign that you have high histamine. So when there's high histamine in autism families, we often see that there is low methyl so you are an under-methylator. And that's a big problem. It causes a lot of problems for the children and for uh, autism parents. This is just my dog playing with uh, her toys. When you have low methylation, when you're an under-methylator, you have low activity of serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine. And this can give you Autism, when, it, when we're talking about children, but also in adults, it can cause OCD, ADHD, severe depression, all kinds of mental illnesses. And that is important to regulate. What often happens with these families in the health community and in the autism recovery community, where there's a lot of practitioners giving you green juices or giving you methylfolate, there's also a tendency for folate intolerance. So we as undermethylators, almost 95% of all the children with autism and all the parents, like the moms of children with autism deal with this. We are folate intolerant. So this will, if we're taking folate or if we have a high, green high folate diet, it will make matters worse, meaning it will make OCD worse, ADHD worse, autism symptoms worse, depression worse, uh, rigidity worse, and a compulsion and depression worse. This is often linked towards, almost always linked to zinc deficiency, B6 deficiency, and you're not supposed to take methylfolate or have a green juice every day if this is your issue. You also need to really consider avoiding high histamine foods. This is why some of these children, and maybe yourself, 
doesn't do well on collagen probiotics or bone broth or fermented foods, even though they're supposed to be really healthy, it can cause an exacerbation of autism symptoms and depression, OCD, perfectionism and rigidity. We also know that the opposite is also the a possibility in the mental health crisis scene. So you can also have someone who is an overmethylator. They'll typically be uh, very, uh, very low in histamine, and they will have a high activity of serotonin and dopamine, and dopamine activity which is linked to high anxiety. It's also linked in William Walsh's studies. He's got a huge database from his nonprofit organization about all these cases in autism and mental, mental illnesses. So uh, it can be linked to issues like schizophrenia and bipolar disease and a high anxi anxiety. And where undermethylators really got to watch it with the folate the overmethylators really thrive on a high, high folate diet, so they can be vegetarians. Undermethylators absolutely cannot be vegetarians and recover. We need protein. We thrive on a protein-rich rich diet. So don't go vegetarian in an autism family because you're most likely, almost certainly, undermethylated. But the overmethylators can thrive on folate because folate, even though it increases methylation it acts as a um, as a um, reuptake inhibitor so it lowers dopamine activity and that's a that's a benefit when it's a folate related high anxiety that these people are um, the, it, it, a dopamine related sorry high anxiety situation that these people are dealing with so in the autism community it's not often that we see um Overmethylators, but it does happen. It's really rare, but the undermethylation problem is really common in the community. Over 90%, probably closer to 95%. So next time you're thinking about eating disorders, OCD, ADHD, autism, depression in your family, rigidity, your own and your child's, you got to look at understanding your methylation level. And this is not by doing a gene test or an MTHFR test, it will tell you nothing about your methylation status. This is about taking a whole blood histamine test and adjusting accordingly. And there's a caveat here because there's a lot of practitioners out there getting to know a lot about methylation and they do know how to do the testing, but it's really, really rare that someone who's doing the test actually are really good at adjusting methylation because it's a tug of war. You don't want to go overboard. You want a a, a complete balance when it comes to methylation. And I only know two practitioners out there who are really good at that. There are a lot who are doing more damage by trying to regulate methylation without having the foundation. And I know that one of the best ones out there, Dr. Albert Mensa, he says that it takes about six years of clinical practice to fully master this. So if you go to someone who's got a, a course in methylation or they don't have years of experience in regulating this, you got to run because they are probably going to make matters worse. And this is something that I'm really, really passionate about teaching moms in my Autism Turnaround membership. So if you want to know more about that, follow along, hit the subscribe button and give this video a like and share it and stay tuned for the next episode and maybe check out my webpage barefootautismwarriors.com. Until next time, take care. So as promised, here's a bit of an unusual take on this story. And um, one of the craziest things that happened when my son's autism symptoms were turned around, if you don't know me, my son's symptoms, stimming, screaming, aggression, sleepless nights, rigidity, um, nonverbal autism, echolalia, eloping, all the things were turned around between four, 2004 and 2008. And one of the things that happened also in my family was that both my son and my husband and his, um, my, my son's brother, they no longer needed their asthma medication. They no longer had um, asthma and allergies, seasonal allergies. They didn't need medication for that. And my husband had been a sense, severe allergic since childbirth to a point where he could not breathe all throughout the spring and summer. When we were together, he had to sit up in the bed because he couldn't breathe. 
And when we changed everything that ended up turning my child's symptoms around, the asthma and the allergy symptoms disappeared as well. So there are two things I want to say to you. It's a sign. I'm not here to diagnose or treat or give you any any uh, symptom treatments. I'm not a medical professional, so you need to consult with the doctor and it's on your own responsibility and risk to, to listen to this educational video. That's all it is. But when we stopped eating dairy and gluten and we changed our lifestyle into this turnaround process that I'm now teaching inside of my membership, and when we added in the nutrients that are needed for undermethylation as well, the symptoms disappeared. And I want to give you two things that are almost always the case with undermethylation. It's almost always the case that you are zinc deficient and that you are B6 deficient. And so that's something to check as well and something to look into and be curious about. I'm not telling you what to eat and how much or anything like that. It takes me about 12 months to teach moms how to do this on their own, become their own expert inside the autism turnaround course at barefootautismwarriors.com. But that was all I wanted you to know about seasonal allergies. Instead of just taking a, a pill for the symptom, how about dealing with the root cause? Music